Okay, uh, it is hot as heck outside. The pond is right. You can kind of see it, there's the blind, but there is no way that I'm going to sit out there in this heat. You might have heard me name drop that uh, I owned an R5 for a little while. So this video today, we're gonna keep it a little bit short, uh, for me at least, and I am gonna go through one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six points it looks like about uh, the R5 versus the new Fuji X-H2S for wildlife. <clears throat> I'll save most of those for another uh, video. Uh, and I have a couple of uh, pictures from uh, our guest star, Matt Parrish, due to the Fuji. Um, I will say these Fuji files, <coughs> excuse me, are still JPEGs. These are not RAWs. Uh, on one is not really supporting the RAWs yet. So uh, there's gonna be a little bit of built-in sharpening to the JPEGs, but um, I do expect the Fuji RAWs to perform even better once you're able to sharpen and denoise those yourself as opposed to, uh, you know, as opposed to letting the system do it. So what I wanna show, a couple of points here. Uh, we are going to go over uh, autofocus, noise, uh, speed frames per second, the megapixels, video modes, and comparing the two lenses that I think are, are most rec uh, recommended for video. So the first thing, let's start with noise first. So uh, the reason I chose these pictures is because these are um, very similar situations. So we're shooting uh, loons, uh, mostly at a lake in the Kawarthas. There's one other lake here with a juvenile. Um, but yeah, mostly the same loons, same t actually probably the same birds a year apart. They tend to come back to the same lake. Uh, shooting from the kayak, uh, mostly the same shooter, me, so same skill level. So I think these are a good test. Um, so let's dive into it. So first, okay, here, now these I believe, my catalog got a little messed up when I switched from Lightroom and I'm, I don't back things up, but I don't think these are edited. So... <clears throat> You can see the data. So this was before I got the RF 100 to 500. I actually don't think I have loon shots with that lens. No, you know what? I did. I don't because I bought that lens earlier in 2022 in the winter. So these were shot with the EF 100 to 400 um, with the teleconverter, the 560. But I will still compare the lenses. I can compare this one as well. But I have a lot of experience shooting the 100 to 500. And ultimately, I didn't like it much. That's why I left Canon. Uh, not that I didn't like it. It's just I think it's... I think the Canon stuff's way too expensive and I think you can get the same result on something else. Uh, so a couple things here. I was shooting F8, um, F8 aperture because of the teleconverter. So the lens is uh, 5.6, but then we're losing one stop of, of light from the teleconverter. Uh, what were we, 1 16 hundredth of a shutter. Um, probably could have slowed that down to shoot at an even lower ISO. Um, but I was, they were diving and going down for food. So I was trying to get some, uh, some speed here just in case, uh, they did something. Um, this was at nine o'clock in the morning. So you can see pretty good detail. I mean, they were a, a decent, um, you know, not too far away. You can see, so this is 560 mil uncropped. So you're not, not filling the frame. Um, but it's a nice, you know, nice, uh, Distance, uh, not a lot of noise. I think this is another big thing with noise. I'll do another video on soon, but um, if you don't crop, like noise isn't an issue. You can't see noise here until you until you crop in, just make sure I'm recording. Uh, once you crop though, like just as uh, for argument's sake, if I were to edit this photo, I'd probably crop it, you know, something, something like that. And then I would probably clean up our, I would sharpen and denoise. Mm, yeah, I mean, this is a raw, so I think it's, a, it's handling it a little bit better. And, oh, sorry. This is why I like on one no noise so much because you can see rather than uh, having to export to Topaz, I just do it all in one. And then let's, push the shadows a little, maybe like that, maybe a little contrast. Loons are tough to expose. You can see like the juvenile, very sharp. Um, the adult, like, I mean, that's tough. The shadows like start to fall apart as soon as they push them up that much. So maybe down a little bit lower. But again, that's, you know, even if you push the shadows a bit more when you're not zoomed in as much, that's pretty nice. So I'm, I'm really happy with that file for sure. So this is the R5. 
Let's look at a couple other ones. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So this was a juvenile. I, mm, that's a JPEG. I think that was edited. Maybe these were all edited. This is, mm, maybe I was shooting JPEG that morning. Same lens, different lake, slightly older bird. Um, <coughs> this was earlier in the morning. My settings must be wrong. This, this wasn't at 7 p.m. I think this was at like 6 a.m. But you can see this is a little hazy. It's definitely not as sharp. And I think the bird was probably similar distance. Uh, again, the noise, this is only ISO 640 and the noise a little lower. Um, can't remember if this one, if I edited this or not, but say, yeah, I think one thing to remember with a lot of these birds, especially water birds, is water reflects. So the eye never seems sharp. Well, it's because his eye is reflecting all the light back at me and he's wet. So even though like the feather detail is sharp, this isn't the sharpest bird here, but I mean, where there is sharpness in the head, you, you almost seem to always lose it in the eye. Uh, but again, it depends. Like, I, I don't think pixel peeping shots makes the most sense, but those are some R5 shots. That was, that's the Olympus. So I just wanna, wanna skip around a few. Like again, you know, you can see, so ISO 2000 here, F8, 930, and the noise is, looks pretty fine. There's an action shot. You can see why loons, like just looking at this, why loons are hard, right? Because like, you know, this photo is exposed well enough, but then you've completely lost the face. So, you know, you either, you can brush in higher exposure to the face, but like, I mean, that's very black. That's, I don't think we've lost. No, okay, so we haven't, we haven't clipped the shadows, but you can see like, when I start pushing enough to see detail in the face, um, it starts looking weird, right? Like it's falling apart quick. So that's my point, I think, is like, I mean, this is a pretty well shot loon and well, exposed and it was an overcast that day, but decent light. But if you're not really using a lot of skill, and I mean, I could have done better with this, but it's, I think that's the thing is like the R5 is not a magic camera that's just going to destroy um, or take away the need for skill and just make everything awesome. So let's compare that <coughs> to the Fuji. Uh, now, these are maybe a little bit farther away. So what did I notice shooting the Fuji? So first of all, these are a lot earlier in the morning. I would say the ISOs on these are gonna be higher. The shutter speeds are gonna be a lot lower. Um, I think a year of experience, I've been trying to shoot slower shutter speeds, learning what I can get away with. In hindsight, I did notice going through some of these files that I felt better with um, ISOs one stop higher and shutters one stop higher as well. This is a 7.1, interesting fact. So you can see 520 mil. I was zoomed out a little bit to kind of frame this and didn't work out. But um, if you wanna speed up the lens on the Fuji a little bit more, is if you zoom out to 560 or shorter, then you go to 7.1 instead of eight. It's not uh, you know only a partial stop, but it's still something. But again, zoom in 2500. I think the noise is like very comparable. Um, to the Canon shots. Let's just find one of the Canons. Uh, how do we do this? Sorry, I don't, I should have practiced this. There we go. Okay, and let's put away the sides. Uh, but if we zoom in, I mean, this, so you can see this bird on the right under the R5 was a lot closer but I think the noise is pretty similar. So this is kind of what I'm getting at. <clears throat> you could pixel peep these and pick your favorite, but but there's this myth that full frame sensors are so much better than noise for than ASPC with noise. And I just, I don't believe that's true um, at all. I, I mean, I, I think the only time I think it's a big benefit is if you're not cropping at all. So uh, if I was like happy with this composition and didn't crop it, versus I, let's say I cropped in over here or vice versa. I, I think whenever you crop, you're going to automatically bring in a lot more noise to the photo. So here's the Fuji, a uh, little bit of noise. Um, where are we going? That's back to the R5. What are we on time? I always lie when I say I'm gonna keep these short. I'm gonna keep this video under 20 minutes, I promise. Uh, here's another shot of the Fuji. So this is 3200 at 1 250th. 
Uh, again, this is pretty dark, but I mean, even at 3200, I mean, I'm, I'm not having any issue with the noise. Uh, there were a couple, that's 2,500. I think I edited that a bit more. That's 4,000. Noise is still fine. That's easy to clean. I shot some of these at, at that's a JPEG that's edited. I shot some of these at a very high noise ratio. Um, I just, just for argument's sake too, I do have a few shots of the same bird from the Olympus on the EM1X. I think you can, like, I, st I feel like I see more noise here, even though this is at the F4 lens. Uh, I was still shooting at 2,500, a little further away. Slightly different time of light, but I, I think like the image quality fell apart a little faster on the Olympus. Uh, that was the EM1X Micro Four Thirds with the 300 uh, mil F4 Pro. Um, still very usable. I mean, I, I got lots of results I liked with it, but, but I do see more of a difference between that versus the ASPC and full frame sensor. This is a 6400. Um, <clears throat> you can see a little more noise here maybe than the 3200 but again like the noise is not bothering me at all here and if i take that and just denoise it one click now this is a jpeg so because it's already being sharpened in the jpeg i'm going to turn down some of that sharpening here but i mean you can see like the noise basically disappears after i i process it so um I'm not happy with any of my loon shots from the day anyway. I think I, I botched them. I was trying to do too many things. But let's look at a couple of, um, of process shots from the Fuji. So again, these are all from Matt Parrish due to the Fuji. Um, these are JPEGs after he's edited them, uh, but he doesn't do much to his edits, just you know, a little bit of work. So the same F8, that's the lens he was full zoom. Uh, I guess he was going for action one two thousandth. The light had come up quite a bit by now, and because the light's hitting the bird's face, you're getting contrast and detail. But like, if you look at that image quality and sharpness compared to what I got, um, there's a lot more. There's a, now, there's a little bit of artifacting here. Um, again, I didn't edit the shot, so I'm not sure what he did. Um, uh, you know, in terms of. Uh, uh, of the enhanced details slider and on one, I think he usually turns it off and paints in his own sharpening. But again, like to my eye, viewing this at the intended distance, I think it looks really, really good. And you, and I know for a fact, this is already a cropped photo. So when I zoom in this, we're talking like three to 400% zoom rate from what he originally shot uncropped. So like, I mean, <laughs> everything's gonna look crunchy once you do that, That's that's crazy. Um, another beautiful shot here at 3,200. Um, you know, I mean, I, again, I assume he's probably denoised it, but like the noise and texture, everything looks great. That's a really nice one. Fuji colors, I tell you, they really do a good job. There's another really nice one. So it looks like he, uh, he even stopped that down a bit. I wonder if that was on purpose or just a slip of the ring. Uh, probably on purpose. He's, he's a pro, but look at these results. These are, these are beautiful shots. So you look at those. That's a nice one too. The colors you look at those. And then you look, this is my untouched JPEG. Um, I would, what would I say are the big differences? So the first one, the light, Matt was using the light much better. Um, like, in, like, I mean, I wish these were kind of backlit a little, uh, when I was shooting them, uh, Matt was getting the light onto the birds for better contrast and colors. Uh, and he was closer. I was more focused on making our, our video. Uh, I wanted him to test the gear, but in you know the half hour I did shoot the kit, I, I was not thinking critically about my shooting and, and you can kind of see what happened. Uh, this one, just as I'm scrolling through these, so this is ISO 8000, still very usable. Like again, if I had shot this um, at the same ISO, but with a little bit more contrast or been a little bit closer to the birds, uh, there'd be a lot more detail, but I, I mean, I'm, I still don't hate that, um, for what I'm getting. I mean, considering the distance and the conditions, like, I mean, this was shot at six in the morning before the sun had even hit the lake. So there was no light. Um, you know, I guess it's subjective. If, if you, Matt really likes super tight, crispy portraits and likes getting tons of detail. I tend to like more environmental stuff. Uh, but even um, ISO wise, he shoots at his XT2 all the time at 6400. So, um, so yeah. So you know, I mean, I I I hope seeing these files gives you a bit of an idea. But to my eye, con comparing the uh, R5 files to the Fuji, 
I don't see any any noticeable benefits really. Um, so let's. I want to keep this this to twenty minutes. So let's let's blast through our speed round of. Of comparison, so noise we've looked at them. Uh, I'm sure, yeah, I, I'm sure full frame does have better noise performance, but I think the thing we have to remember is it's not crazy. Maybe it's one stop. Maybe there's a little bit of a benefit, but if you're going to do some post processing, which if you're shooting wildlife, you basically have to. Um, there's no reason ASPC can't do the job or Micro Four Thirds, but I think ASPC gives you the reach and still a good file quality and you're getting newer options. The trouble with some of the Olympus uh, files is the sensors haven't really been updated in a while. So, um, or, or in terms of adding more megapixels and things like that, they still seem to be trying to break through to the next level. And I say that as someone who loves the OM-1, love Olympus, I think it's an awesome kit. But I do think the ASPC has a, has a bit of a benefit on the ISO um, performance. Of course, Olympus has the 300 mil F4, so you've got more light there. So that kind of offsets it. I think all of the kits have a big benefit if you approach them the right way. So noise, I don't think is a problem. Autofocus, um, <clears throat> I think they're similar. I, I don't find, I don't have them side by side to compare, but I don't find that the Fuji hunts more than the R5. What I would say is the R5 was a little bit smarter. Um, the Fuji, I have different modes for people, birds, uh, animals, uh, and they're quick to switch. I mean, I can switch it within one or two seconds on a couple button presses. It's not a big deal. And usually I'm not switching anyways, uh, but the R5 was a little bit smarter. It did all animals, birds, mammals, whatever, and it just seemed to pick things up no matter where in the scene they were. So I think, I feel like I get the same results. I don't feel like I miss more shots with the Fuji, but I will say the Canon still feels, you know, 10% more intuitive out of the box. So credit where credit is due. Um, speed, the Fuji crushes the R5 on speed. I will say I don't care at all. I think 40 FPS is gimmicky. I don't think you need it. I, don't, I have seen very few people shooting FPS speeds that high that need it. I, I mean, I've seen lots of crazy action shots on cameras that shoot five, six, seven, 10 FPS. So the R5, I believe, caps out at 20. I Googled it and I, th I think that's what I saw. The Fuji taps out at 40. I haven't even shot it over 20. I shot it at 15 a lot. Uh, my friends are still convincing me to shoot electronic shutter, which I have been doing. Uh, I don't like it, but I'm gonna keep doing it. People tell me shutter slap's a real thing. I guess so. I don't notice a difference in my sharpness from mechanical. And I like mechanical, I like the click. The fake sound from the electronic shutter just doesn't fulfill me, but... Uh, Whatever. I've never found a need to shoot silent, although a little bit at my blind, I have been starting to shoot silent. Um, if it's super quiet out there and there's a skittish bird, then sometimes I will. So, uh, okay. So autofocus, noise, speed. So autofocus, I think is a tie. Noise is probably a tie. The R5 maybe wins by a little, but I don't think real world it comes out on top in terms of results. Uh, speed, the Fuji wins, but I don't think it matters. Megapixel size. So when I was debating on the R5 and the R6, everybody said get the R5 because you can crop more. Um, again, I guess theoretically that's true, but I, I'm not here to pixel peep and take pictures of a brick wall and zoom in 400%. I'm In my real world experience, I don't feel like I could crop in as far at a high megapixel body as I thought I could. And I say this having owned an R5 and then owned a Nikon D850, and I just don't notice a difference in those megapixels. I think... It's, it's, I mean, I'm interested in the Fuji GFX someday for landscapes. I would love to shoot high megapixel, super detailed shots if I'm not cropping them. But I think once you start cropping R5 files down one 200% for wildlife, like a crazy person, I think at that point, ASPC is just giving you easier reach. And even, even if you could crop with the same image quality, the trouble is that it's harder to autofocus and do all those things, right? So if you can autofocus and compose and you can get on your, your species natively with the lens, I think that's a big difference. So I don't really value the extra megapixels. Whatever the food, the new Fuji sensor is, 26 or something, is more than sufficient for me. And here's the thing with reach. So <clears throat> skipping down a little, I'll come back to video in a second, but skipping down to the lens size. So the reason I, I mainly sold, I loved my R5, although I thought it was too expensive, but I really, I, I ended up lusting for the RF 100 to 500. And I have to say, I don't think it's worth buying over a used copy of the one to 400 with a teleconverter. Um, it's lighter, so the lightweight thing is nice. You don't have to use the adapter, but 
I mean, it's, you know, even then, I don't think it's that much lighter. I don't find it to be sharper. I don't find it to focus faster. Again, do your tests in a lab or whatever, and yes, you will probably find incremental benefits. But real world, you're going to spend at least double on an RF100 to 500 than you would on a used copy of an EF100 to 400 Mark II. Uh, and as my friend Alex keeps raving about, uh, the RF100 to 400, the new, like, cheap lens, I think, is a better option than both of them because I, I think it's going to give you the same real world results at again like 800 bucks versus what 4,000 plus with tax for the 100 to 500. So I'm not saying the 100 to 500 is a bad lens. I'm just saying it's wildly overpriced and you can get better results or the same results for way cheaper. So that's the thing with the Fuji kit. I have a 1.5 crop on the sensor at 600 mil, which is a big jump for Fuji. So I have 900 millimeters of reach versus this, when I was shooting the RF 100 to 500, I was getting 500 or 560 on the one to four with the teleconverter. Uh, this is a big difference. I mean, I, I have to crop almost 100% on the Canon just to get to the same um, reach as the Fuji natively. So uh, by the time I do that, the Fuji actually has more megapixels on the bird than the Canon. Um, and I don't really have to crop the Fuji files all that much. I'm already shooting far, I'm composing what I want. So for me, that's a really big benefit. Uh, video, okay, that's the last one. Um, I don't think 8K is useful at all, especially in the R5. Um, I use the R5 for a fair bit of video. I don't think 6K is all that useful for the Fuji either. Uh, I'm sure some people have a use for them and that's cool, but for wildlife shooting, especially out in the field and trouble with wildlife video, and I'm gonna be doing a lot more content on this in the future, but the big trouble is, is you're wasting a lot of time filming nothing, right? You're film. I was shooting herons in a marsh the other day and I'm filming five minutes of content to get that five seconds of a strike where it goes for the fish and swallows it. And I can't delete and clean those files up till I get home. So what am I gonna do? I'm out in the marsh shooting 8K. I'm gonna shoot terabytes and terabytes of data. Um, that's just not realistic. So even 4K 120 eats data, but I, when you use it smart, you can get enough time. I would never shoot more than 4K right now for wildlife, and that's what this comparison is about. The Fuji 4K uh, wild, uh, sharpness is super, super good. I love the quality of the 4K 120 in the Fuji. Um, I've said it before, maybe I'm wrong, but I never had the R5 in a, it, the quick record video. When I used it on the R5, it always defaulted to whatever my custom settings were. I think C3 were the settings. So I always found that whenever I quick recorded, it defaulted to whatever settings I had and I always ended up using the wrong exposure and then I had to fix it. The Fuji seems to, when I hit that button, it seems to just record in whatever exposure I'm currently using. So if I'm shooting stills of a bird, and then I want to switch and capture some video. I just hit the button and starts recording. The shutter, everything's already ready. The shutter defaults to what I need it to be. The exposure seems to be there. Now, again, maybe the R5 can do that and I was just too dumb to get it set up. But out of the box, the Fuji just seems to work better for that quick record button. Um, so I'm a big fan of that. The Fuji also has a lot more codecs inside. It has built-in ProRes, which for file size, as I said, maybe you're not using ProRes for wildlife, but ProRes is going to be easier to work with on your computer. It's cool. You got to buy certain CF Express cards to use it. So in hindsight, I thought ProRes would be super cool. I haven't used it at all yet. And I don't know when I will, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, I didn't keep this to 20 minutes, but I am going to finish it up very quickly. Who would I recommend the R5 to for wildlife? Um, I would say nobody, especially this combo. Um, if you already have the R5, I'm not pooping on your camera. I owned it and loved it. But if you were going to buy a brand new kit today, I don't see what the R5 brings to the table that you can't get with something else. Um, whether it's this new Fuji kit or things from other brands. I mean, you know, Nikon makes a bunch of amazing lenses for the same price as the 100 to 500. But now you're talking, you know, cool primes and things like that. So once they put out a body that can autofocus at that price range, 3000, you're in business, right? So looking at the price here, you know, the R5 is 5,200 Canadian versus the Fuji at 3,200. So we're talking a $2,000 price gap. Um, you know, that's, that's almost 50% more expensive for um, the R5. That's a big difference. And I don't, I just don't see what it gives you that the Fuji doesn't do. And then the lens, we're talking another 1,300 bucks for the lens over this lens. So I'm sitting here thinking I like the Fuji body just as much as the R5. I do like the R5 ergonomics a little more. The Fuji, I still think it's, you know, half an inch too short for my, my pinky, but, but I love how it feels. I love how it's built. 
So even though I like the R5 body a lot, I think the Fuji performs just as well for a fraction of the price. And then I greatly prefer the Fuji lens to the R5 100 to 500. I hated how you couldn't compress it with the teleconverter. It had to stay zoomed out. It's an external zoom. Um, I just think this is a way better lens. And again, it's 1300 bucks cheaper. So I think Fuji has really stepped up to, to say, if, you, if somebody came up to me and said, hey, I wanna buy a high-end wildlife kit, I just don't see what benefit you'd get over buying the Canon. What I think is most interesting in summary about Canon is some of their new cheap stuff. The R7 seems really good. Um, no doubt about it, the Fuji outperforms the R7 by a long shot. It's a way better camera, but again, it's almost twice the cost or 50% or more, 60% more. It's a lot more expensive. Uh, the R7 <clears throat> and the 100 to 400 lens is a really good combo. You can get it quite affordable. Um, and you're gonna go get great results. So, especially for stills, maybe not so much for video, but if somebody was, was on a budget, I would recommend that. If they were gonna spend more money, I would recommend the Fuji. I don't know when I would start recommending the A1 or the R3 or stuff like that. I mean, now obviously the R3, you're talking low light, I think like an R3 is gonna give you way better low light performance than, than this or the R5. So I think that's a big benefit, assuming you're close to your subject. If I was going on a safari in Africa, then yeah, I think I don't think there's a camera in the world I'd rather have than an R3 and a 600 mil f4 lens or something. But for most of us, your hobby is you're going out, you're shooting songbirds, you're shooting a hawk on a fence or an owl or whatever. You probably need more reach. You're shooting in tougher conditions. You're not getting as close to the animal, and you probably don't have the budget. So um, I th I think the Fuji is tough to beat. I mean, I I can't wait to put it up against things like the Z9 and the R3 and uh, the A1, I, I think it can hang with those cameras in terms of quality for, for a fraction of the price. But, you know, I won't go on the limb yet and say that because I haven't tested it to those, but I did own the R5. This is the last time I'm gonna say that I owned an R5. We're done, I promise. But having owned it for a year and shot a lot of pictures on that, uh, now having owned the Fuji, that's all I wanted. I wanted to go back to something that had uh, the image quality, the video capability, and the autofocus of the R5, but I didn't want to have, you know, $10,000 plus in, uh, in camera equipment sitting on the table. So I saved a lot of money on the Fuji kit, and, and I think it's really great. So I'm an advocate for it. I'm going to keep uh, pumping tires, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I will post a Dropbox link as well to um, some of these files below. So if you want to check out... Uh, check out these files and you can. Thanks so much.